Adam H. Vampire or Nightmare Castle. So heads we will watch Adam H. Vampire, tails we will watch uh, Nightmare Castle. Lalo Duck everyone, it's me again, Penny. And I don't know if you guys noticed, it's a little bit darker here today. My bulb in my main light fixture went out so I just have my lamp light and so um <clears throat> my apologies if things look a little weird I kind of like it though I think it adds like a little creepiness to it There's my shadow hey so the movie I watched is called Atomic Age Vampire and um just by going off the title, uh, the, <laughs> it really wasn't what I expected it to be. Okay. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. Let's do this. So the movie starts with this pretty blonde. And she's in like, I don't know if it's like her apartment or her dressing room or something like that. But this guy walks in. And she's wearing nothing but like a robe. <clears throat> and the guy comes in and he's just like, she's like, oh, Pierre. And he's like, bitch, put some clothes on. Because that's what you want an attractive young blonde woman to do, right? Put as much clothes on as fucking possible. So he comes in and she's like, okay. And she goes behind one of those, um, it's like those screens where you go and change your clothes, like these dividers. She goes behind there, and the guy, and the guy, <laughs> the guy is like, he's like, I only came in to tell you goodbye. And she's like, what? And he's like, well, you have to choose either me or your profession. And so she's like a. I don't know what she does. She's she's like some an entertainer of some sort. Later on, when she goes outside, you can see um, she's got a poster of herself out there, and maybe she's like a dancer or something. But apparently, he does not approve, Pierre. And so she's begging him. She's just like, no, no, don't leave me. And he's just like, f you, bitch. And so um, he fucks off and she goes off after him. <laughs> she goes into her car and she starts driving after, driving after him just completely crazy. Rolling down this hill. And of course, when she gets to the bottom of this hill, as vehicles are wont to do in movies, as soon as they roll down a fucking hill, they explode. So her vehicle starts on fire. And the next shot, she's in a hospital. She's got like this bandage all over her head. Kind of like, you know, the, the Joker in Batman. They take off um, her bandages and her hair looks marvelous. It looks great. It looks like it's it's been, you know, blow dry, curled. Looks excellent. But she's got like a fucked up cheek. So this part of her face, I don't remember which side, but it's just all like Bleh. And so she's super sad. Like she is soups depressed about it. And she's chilling in her hospital room. And um she's got like this framed picture of Pierre she's like crying to like oh my god he's never gonna love me again wow she has no family here not even friends close enough to worry about her the newspapers made that clear go to her does anyone know you in that clinic no one and no one must know that Jeanette Morino is coming here no one will know I have complete faith in you as always and I know that I shall succeed you're going to need me I'll be here out there and this brunette chick walks in and she is wearing a trench coat 
<laughs> she's all incognito with her glasses and she's got like one of those hats and she comes in and she says that um there's a scientist that can help with her cheek thing and the lady the blonde chick i guess her name's Jeanette. I, uh, I think this is a French movie. Everyone's dubbed hilariously. <laughs> the lady, yeah, she's like, well, the doctor can fix you. You know, if you want to get better, here's my card. If you don't, whatever. <clears throat> so, <laughs> the lady leaves and then... Um, this guy walks in um, into the hospital and he wants to talk to Jeanette, but his name is Leroy and I guess he's like a um, like, um, reporter or something, like kind of like a, like a famous reporter, I guess, I'm not really sure. But he comes in, he talks to the doctor and he's like trying to smooth talk his way in so he can talk to Jeanette, Jeanette but um, he doesn't get to. Right before, before the, um, the brunette chick leaves, like, uh, Jeanette is just like smoking in her bedroom and it always freaks me out to see you know the smoking laws before I guess it wasn't even that long ago because I remember I'm gonna age myself right now but like when I first turned 21 they were still able to smoke in the bars and I remember like coming home from the bars reeking like cigarette smoke and you go into the shower and you could just like smell the smoke. Oh, it was so gross. I, I do not like, I do not like the smell of cigarettes at all. Blech. Anywho, she's like, yeah, the, the brunette just like, I was never here. And she fucks off. The next shot is of this doctor. And he is with the brunette chick, um... So they're talking about the, it's called Derma 25, and that is um, this thing that they've been, they've been working on that can um, fix shit or re, re uh, like get the cells to, you know, recombobulate and fix injuries and stuff. <clears throat> But they haven't tested it yet on people. But I guess they've been testing it on these animals. The lady had some kind of fucked up thing on her arm. And so he tries the experiment, the derma, whatever, on her. And um, I, I, guess it, I guess it works. He has this beaker and it's full of the thing. It's like the serum. And he puts it back into like it looks like like little microwaves but they're not you know they're just like little storage places where they they put all his uh sciencey shit the way he put it in there the lady's like it looks like you're performing a ritual and he's all maybe i am so the blonde lady she does appear and she's dressed like she's got this big leopard coat on and she's wearing glasses, trying to hide her face, like with the collar. And she comes in. Um, they have like, he's like a, I guess he's a gardener. But he does all kinds of other shit for these people too. You know, he's kind of like their servant. And um, his name is Sasha. So he goes and he, you know, brings her in. And she's met by the brunette lady. Perfect. The scientist comes in. And he looks at her and he's just kind of like, just kind of negging her. Kind of like, yeah, you're going to look disfigured like this forever. And you're going to be hideous. And it's like, it's like, like cancer or, or leprosy. And... She just starts crying, and she's super dramatic about it. No, no, like, I'm going to look like this forever. I'm going to be hideous, and da-da-da-da. 
And he's like, well, I can fix you. You don't have to, you, you don't have to act like this. And he's like, you know, you are a very beautiful human specimen. And the brunette chick's like, oh, what? <laughs> the Sasha guy, he finds him in the cellar where they have all the wine. And he is just like passed out drunk. Just like, <laughs> like face down ass up drunk. And he comes in and the, the scientist guy is like mad at him. And he's like kicks him and he like wakes him up. And the guy just, you know, he's like scampers away all drunk and shit. <laughs> He's pissed because of uh, Sasha's drunkenness. It made the generator run out. So they didn't have like power to one of the like machines and shit. And so he's mad about that. And there's like some kind of leak too. So the next scene is um it's that restaurant thing that uh, Pierre likes to go to and there's a lady and she's dancing and she is like an exotic like dancer and you know she's dancing through the tables and stuff and guys are ogling this lady and um, Pierre is there getting wasted and uh and there's a there's a chick there that wants like she's trying super hard to take Pierre home. She's like, you, you want to come with me? Um, I can take you home. Da -da -da -da. This bitch is thirsty. <laughs> and this other guy, I guess he knows him from somewhere. Maybe they're like in I don't know military together or some shit. Because I know he was wearing like a uniform in the beginning of the movie. But the guy's like, hey, um, I'm about to go home. You can hop in the car with me. And Pierre's like, yeah. So he gets up and hops in the car with this guy. I mean, I don't know why he would turn down some lady. I don't know. This wasn't into her, I guess. So the Derma 28, I guess, it works. And so he, he asks the lady, I guess her name is Monique. The, the brunette chick that helps him with all his shit. And um, he's like, drinks, we need drinks. So she goes off and <laughs> comes back down with two drinks for them to celebrate, you know, because his experiment worked on um, this lady, this girl. Okay, so the scientist is just like staring at the blonde chick and he's, he's just like enamored with her. You know, he's just like, oh, like, oh my God, she's so hot and all that. And the brunette chick, Monique, she, she realizes it. Like, he's just like, when Jeanette first wakes up and she sees her face and her face is like all pretty again, her first, uh, the first thing she does is like run over to the scientist and gives him like this really passionate kiss. So when um, when the blonde chick finally, you know, comes to and she looks great, they kind of like, you know, sell, he celebrates with uh, Jeanette. Yeah, he celebrates with Jeanette and he's already in love with her, you know, so he's got ulterior motive. Does that sound right? Okay. So, anyway, he is um, in love with this girl, and they're celebrating, and Jeanette's like, where's Monique? And the scientist guy is just like, oh, she's, you know, she, she's somewhere. She's uh, off doing her research and experiments and blah, blah, blah. When in actuality, <laughs> Monique is up in her room I'm crying like a little bitch. <laughs> Listening to records all hella sad, you know, pivoting. Oh, what's the white person word for that? Um, like sulking, you know, like, meh. You know, hmm. you know just, just being all sad and shit. The scientist 
is putting the moves on Jeanette. He, you know, he says he loves her. So he never fucking forgets that. And so this night when he's like liquoring her up, he's just like giving her martini after martini. He's like, you want another one? Here you go. Drink up. You, you didn't drink it fast enough. You should finish that one. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And um, yeah, he's like, hey, do you remember that kiss? Remember when, what, when, you, when you kissed me that time when you woke up? Remember that? <laughs> so Monique, while she's in her room, like all sad and crying and shit, Sasha walks in. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, what's wrong? She was like, <laughs> close the door. <laughs> so he, uh, the scientist guy tells Jeanette that he loves her. And she's like, well, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't have done that, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. And he's like, you do love me. I restored your beauty. So he's like, kind of, Saying like she owes him because he did all that shit for her, so now she owes him something. And so they have a disgusting kiss. I don't know. He's like creepy old dude and kissing this young girl, and it just looks so wrong. Bleh. <laughs> <clears throat> but he sees like something on her neck. He sees that, um, like, the, the scarring is starting to come back. And so he's like, oh, shit. And he's got, like, the vial of the, the stuff in, her, in his hand. And then he's like, oh, my God. I can't do anything without Monique because he's like, the scar is coming back and we need to fix it. But I can't fix it without Monique. And she's the bitch crying up in her room right now. <laughs> so he goes up and uh sends for Monique and um Sasha Sasha carries Jeanette back to the lab. He says he needs to get uh more of that serum. The serum that that makes everything um makes everybody like rebuild their cell shit and he says he needs to get it from another young woman. So I think that's how he's been getting it, is from young women. Monique is bought her because she knows that the scientist guy is in love with Jeanette. And he's like, you know what, if you can help me fix her, I will send Jeanette like a thousand miles away, okay? And um, Monique's like, deal and so they kiss bound together forever forever and ever why the music gotta be so foreboding it's a kiss not a hitchcock shower scene and and she said she'd help him sorry and the Leroy guy comes over, the um, the guy from earlier that came over to the hospital looking for Jeanette. So he's with this guy, and um, the guy's like smoking, and the Leroy guy is like, "Can't you go half an hour without smoking?" Ha! Ah. Sounds like my ex. Anyway, Jeanette, Jeanette is. Hung Chow. She's like, oh, it must be. I have a terrible headache. It must be from all that champagne. So all that liquor that the scientist guy was feeding her that night. Monique is laying on the bed and she, she looks dead. I think she is. And those like other dudes come in and they're like, what happened to her? Mm. I'm not really sure how they said she died but she is clearly dead. And Jeanette's face is good and her neck is good, so... Looks a little... A little suspicious. But, um... The 
those dudes that came to visit go into um, the scientist's office and they see on um, like his wall he's got like Hiroshima <clears throat> like memorabilia and stuff like these are some bottles that were there and they're all like tweaked out and shit and then these are some something 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 and um they're like yeah he, i studied um you know the effects of radiation on um people and animals and, and stuff it mutations that that type of um radiation causes all these pics like he's got all these pictures of these people all scarred up and all like fucked up looking there's this couple out and about like walking around like on date night or some shit and they stumble upon this dead girl Lady. Her scream, it sounded like an ambulance. Ah! <laughs> that was a little funny. And the uh, Jeanette, she's still with the scientist. So she hasn't gone home to her regular life. She's just been chilling at the scientist's house. Kind of like, I don't know if she has Stockholm Syndrome or what the fuck. But she's just hanging out with him and just... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so they're in the car and she, they're like listening to the radio and whatnot and she starts to feel hot, like her face and everything. She's like, oh my god, I'm starting to feel really hot and he's like, oh no, because I think that's kind of like a sign of um, her uh, serum wearing off. There is no doubt that the girl in the was a victim of the gorilla which escaped. What is it? I feel cold suddenly, and my face is burning like the other night. The night, Monique. Don't get excited. The scientist, he, he starts to, like, Jekyll and Hyde. Like, he starts to get really ugly. His face starts to get all fucked up. Like, he goes into this, his lab or whatever, and, um, his face starts to get all gross, and it, like, he kind of looks like a Blonde Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno is the Hulk, FYI. <laughs> He's out in the park and it's like nighttime and this fucking world's most gullible bitch walks by. Young lady. Hmm? Hey, it's late. Come here, I'll give you anything you ask. All right. You really gave me a turn. What are we playing? Hide and seek? What are you gonna give me? A head start? So I guess he kills this bitch and he takes her essence and now he's normal again. And Jeanette's normal too. And he's like, well, the way we can, we, we only need like one more treatment and um, we could do a tr transplant and then you will be normal. You can be normal forever. And um, she asks him how many times he's had to do it on her. I guess a lot, like he, she doesn't remember a lot of the times. And he's like, well, it's, I've had to do it a few times. She like <clears throat> starts to catch wind that this is not normal. So she goes and calls the lieutenant guy. Green room that Sasha usually works in. And she's like, I'll give you this pack of cigarettes if you go and mail this letter. Because I guess she writes a letter to uh, Pierre. Like, he betrays her. He goes and takes the letter to the scientist guy. He burns it. Scientist guy gets ugly again, and... Jeanette takes the key to the front gate. 
and the scientist guy goes over to Sasha and asks him where the key to the front gate is. And Sasha, he's just like, mm. he's, he's, he's a mute, you know, he doesn't talk. So he just like, and the guy's pissed off, you know, and just like fucking whaps him and shit. And then they both leave. They both leave looking for uh, Jeanette. So this is Pierre, and you have to listen to this fucking dialogue. Don't tell me you've been fighting for me. Well, I have, if you want to know. Hi, Yvonne. Am I wrong, or are you getting fatter? It's becoming, isn't it? <laughs> hey, good yeah. evening. Where's your tackle, buddy? <clears throat> they're out at this pier. So, <clears throat> Pierre, pier, I don't know. They're all they're at this waterfront. And um, that is when Jeanette and Pierre meet again. You know, they haven't seen each other for a long time. And they meet each other, and they're like, <gasps> and they run, you know, hug each other. And Pierre's just like, I thought um, the hospital said you're going to be disfigured forever. Like, like, like that was the whole fucking deal breaker. Time just guy comes in and um, like throws Pierre in the water. To you? Didn't you receive my letter? What letter? Oh, Pierre, take me away! I'm so frightened. Oh, what? Tell me. Ah. Ah. Remember back in the day when women would just get fucking scared and pass out and you could just grab them and drag them away really super easy? Now we need roofies and shit. And Pierre's talking to the cops and he's telling them like she's not a missing person. Oh yeah, so the, the cops go over to the scientist's place with Pierre. And they're trying to pretend that Pierre is one of them, like he's one of the cops, even though he's not. But they want him to, um, you know, to, to try to catch this guy, catch the scientist guy. And so they, they go into the house and like, I, I guess they're like, the scientist guy's trying to smooge them like, hey, you want a drink? You guys want some drinks, want some smokes, whatever. You don't have to blow smoke under my nose. Excuse me. And they were talking about the Japanese stuff with the atomic explosions. And I think that's how um, the scientist guy got his face all fucked up was because of those atomic explosions. I guess that's hence... <laughs> Hence the name, right? <laughs> and I guess they're vampires because they have to keep fucking killing people in order to stay normal looking. And then the scientist guy brings them into the, the greenhouse. And he's hiding Jeanette in there. She's like hiding somewhere in like a cupboard or some shit. So the scientist comes and Pierre is there. The scientist is like, one more application of that serum or whatever and she'll be cured. So Pierre goes over to the scientist and he tells him that he's not a police officer. Um, scientist is trying to run away from everyone. They go to a theater. In his automobile. Have you arranged for reinforcements? Take all precautions. Exactly where is he at the moment? I can't remember what year this was. Atomic Age Empire. Nineteen sixty. Okay, so it was nine. And segregation ended in nineteen sixty four. Okay, so it was nineteen sixty. And so the scientist tries to abduct a lady because he needs her for the serum. So the scientist, the, there's a lady, and they're 
she lives by the waterfront and um she's sleeping the scientist guy comes in and tries to strangle her well luckily she has this fucking kick-ass dog that comes out of nowhere and just attacks him <laughs> and he's just like ah like you know he's trying to like smash the dog away and then the, the, the dog just like scares him out of the house and then the police come and she's the this girl's screaming she's like you know so the cops are going after him <laughs> and he goes inside the house and he sees Jeanette <clears throat> and she is well she's sleeping and then he wakes her up and she's just terrified of him she won't let him get anywhere near her and um, he's telling her, you know, while well, we only have like one more application, he's like, you're still beautiful. So obviously it's like working for you and we could make it, you know, like it, it could work for me too. But she's just freaking. It's all depends on you. No, it's horrible. Janet. Let go of me. Pull the trigger and murder the man who condemned himself for you. Have that much courage at least, because in a moment or two you will go mad. Mad with horror you don't know. <laughs> and so they run downstairs, and um, Pierre, Pierre runs down there too, and he's just like trying to fight with, with the scientist, and they're like in a big old fist fight. And... Uh, And Pierre's losing. Like, he's, like, laying on the ground. He's, like, getting his fucking face smashed into the floor. <laughs> and she comes and she's trying... She tries to help, but she's... <laughs> she's no help. Hmm. He goes over to the, <laughs> to the green room. And, um... Sasha. Sasha runs over to the green room, too. And he does something... To the scientist, I don't know what he does. If it's like, I don't know if it was like the Vul the Vulcan nerve pinch. I don't know what he does, but he does something <laughs> to the to the scientist, and the sci the scientist just like decides to die. I don't know. The cops come, and they're they're pulling Sasha away, and Sasha's like looking at. The professor all sad and shit. <laughs> and, um, uh, what's her face? Jeanette is with, uh, what's his name? You know, uh, Pierre and... Take that man out of here. Well, come on, give me a light. he deserved it so that was atomic age vampire <clears throat> i don't know i think it was like a kind of like a jekyll and hyde type of movie i i, I get where they're going like, like they have to keep killing people in order to stay like not young which is kind of like a vampire thing but more like keep normal the scientist guy was probably lying to the to Jeanette, you know, about like, oh, only one more application. I'm pretty sure he'd be telling her this for a long time. One more, one more, one more, but no. 
I think they'll keep having to do it just to keep looking pretty. <laughs> and I don't know what happens after this. I guess she's cured. Sounds like she was cured. And I feel like it was pretty fucking shitty that Pierre only wanted to be with her after he found out that she was going to be pretty again. Like, oh, the hospital told me you'd always be disfigured. Okay. Fucking dick. <laughs> I think he was better off with fucking Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> All right, so I will rate this thing. Let's see. Um, give it a five. Five out of ten. The women are pretty. At least uh, the main chicks were pretty. <laughs> but and that was it. So, well, I hope you all are enjoying 2021 so far. Mm, I know it's been kind of a shit show right now, but I I feel it. Like I feel good things are on the horizon and we're, we're gonna pure persevere. <laughs> what do you think, Frost? He says yes. We're gonna be so good and we're gonna be this is gonna be a great year, right? Right. right. All right, everybody. I hope you have a good night.